mean, I had never really traveled like alone. I'd always had a dog or a boyfriend. I had this crazy idea. Leave Hawaii and come to Asheville, North Carolina. I think I can, but let's put it to the test. Flip flops and a sundress got on it. It was like, well, here goes nothing. <laughs> Blessington. My blog is Timber Me Ginger, website sarahblessington.com, and this is my scooter Bowie. We traveled across the country for five months, 6,000 miles to get from San Francisco to Asheville, North Carolina. So my previous experience with having a scooter was I was living in Hawaii and a friend of mine knew that I was looking for one and sent me a picture of what was a Honda Metropolitan held together with zip ties and she's like, hey, do you want this? It's $500. And I'm like, I don't even know what that is. And I'd never ridden anything on two wheels besides a bicycle. And I showed it to the person I was sitting next to in the bar. I was like, do you know anything about scooters? Is this good? And he's like, buy that. I was like, okay, great. And then I did. I sent her the money on PayPal. I was like, great. <laughs> so I bought my first scooter and then flew back to that island and flip flops and a sundress got on it. I was like, well, here goes nothing. <laughs> And so with that one, I spent uh, almost a year riding it and I took that apart, put it back together, well, took it apart, had no idea how to put it back together, called someone on the island. Like, it's like, if you could get it sort of together, come, come to my house and I will help you. <laughs> and it just slowly started to build my confidence of like, just knowledge of something this small and this sort of engine and really made me think, it's like, I think I could maintain something like this as opposed to a car with computers or whatever else. It's just like you can take it apart and see everything that's happening. And then I had this crazy idea to um, leave Hawaii and come to Asheville, North Carolina. And I started running some spreadsheets of what would be the most cost-effective way to do so, and I ended up with a scooter. <laughs> so I bought a one-way ticket to San Francisco and had no idea what I was looking for. I knew I wanted something that I could put stuff on, but I didn't even really know what that looked like. And I started Googling bags and top boxes and no one had anything. And I was talking to a friend of mine who uh, overlanded on a scooter for a story. And he was like, "This tiny wheels were a disaster. They're so like, as soon as you hit a rock or limb or something, the wheels just want to run away. And because there's barely any surface area to like help uh, the impact travel. So I was like, okay, so big wheels. And then I ended up at this uh, motorcycle place in San Francisco called SF Moto. And they just totally showed me the world of what could be possible with something like this. And apparently there's this thing called the Cannonball Run, which is where people take scooters the entire way across the country. And someone did that on this. I really didn't test anything while I was getting this ready. I was just kind of feeling that I could just wing it and <laughs> figure it out as I went along, which thankfully because of the amazing humans in this country that I ran across that they, it, it happened, it worked. Um, but I slowly started buying bags. I was like, well, maybe I'll just strap it on there. And then a friend of mine from high school so happened to be there and he taught me how to weld and we welded a rack and designed it together in the night, <laughs> 12 hours. And next thing I knew, I'm like, I could put my bags on this, this works. And then last minute we made a little addition to uh, add extra fuel because I knew that that was gonna be an issue. I wasn't sure exactly what my range would be. It ended up being about 60 to 80 miles. And I had heard so many different reports of like carrying extra fuel, how to do that safely. And so I was nervous at first to put a combustible liquid right next to my body. <laughs> and, you know, who knows if I was going to fall or it was going to explode. And I was like, well, if I'm falling, I'm probably exploding anyway. <laughs> I found someone that actually used to import these scooters into the U.S. And he was nice enough to 
take this all apart with me, show me what everything I needed to know, and then put it back together and gave me a toolkit that I could fix everything except for change the CVT belt or the rear tire. That those were things that I would need outside help. Mm. But as luck would have it, the CVT belt did end up dying <laughs> and exploding <laughs> on my first uh, on my first scooter while I was in Roswell, New Mexico. So I had found a, a YouTube video that someone had thankfully put on the web on how to do it, but there's a very crucial part that it was too loose, so 300 miles later, looking at Mexico, the belt shredded again but melted the entire engine, which I didn't know exactly how bad it was. I knew that something was not good. <laughs> put out a little Facebook message, it's like, I don't know, <laughs> but I'm pretty sure it's not good. <laughs> And with the luck of the internet, everyone just came together and stranger drove six hours away to come pick me up in the middle of Big Bend National Park. And then another stranger let me stay with them for a week or more in San Antonio. And I put it out there to the internet of like, I don't know what to do. Uh, someone else who had followed my adventure um, actually started a GoFundMe for me, which was just so humbling that someone would actually want to help and that not only just help, but like help with money, not just a place to stay or a conversation. And it just totally blew me out of the water. And then every time I saw something go in there and the guy who started it waited three days before he gave me the password, he's like, I didn't want you to be able to return the money until you saw how much people want you to succeed and how much your writing and how much your story means to other people, people that have never thought that they could and that were reaching at straws and you did it. You reached at all the straws, you grabbed them and then you went. <laughs> and it was just really, it was amazing. So then I got Bowie <laughs> and this, uh, the motorcycle shop in San Antonio helped me with them and getting Bowie all set up and then I continue to go. As far as my life here in Asheville, I've been here about a year and I'm a server at a restaurant and doing that allows for me to have time to write about this whole experience and what that was for me to do that. And I mean, I had never really traveled like alone. I'd always had a dog or a boyfriend or a friend, someone to just be support, someone I could cry to or whatever that that was. I always had support and I was like, you know what? I'm going to see if I can. I think I can, but let's put it to the test. Hey guys, I'm Matt from Blue Ridge Overland Gear and we are here at Overland Exposition East. Our favorite part is meeting new people and hearing their stories. We hope you enjoyed it too. Shop all our gear at BlueRidgeOverlandGear.com where everything is made in America and handcrafted for adventure.